In this course, we are emphasizing the need for high throughput approaches for studying proteins and proteome. For such kind of studies, protein microarrays have become a very robust platform. You have seen there are different ways of making protein arrays, starting from printing antibodies or purified proteins or even tissue lysates or cell lysate or even just simply printing the cDNA and make the proteins on the chip using NAPA technology or nucleic acid programmable protein arrays talked about with Dr. Josh Lebar. So, there are many ways of printing the features on the arrays and you can have different type of contents which could be printed on the chips. However, finally what actually makes huge difference is how good your printing is, how reproducible your chips are from one to other batch there is no variability and the spot features are really defined really circular and you are not seeing any diffusion from each of the features. So, printing technology plays a very important role in whole of the microarray experiments and especially in the case of protein microarrays when we have different type of components to be printed on the chip it becomes much more crucial. So, we have invited Dr. Saloni Sonawala from ArrayJet who is going to talk about non-contact inkjet bioprinting which is one of the fastest printing technologies. At ArrayJet her prime contributions have been in designing and optimizing projects, performing assay transfer studies and leading advanced technical training sessions for microarray users worldwide. In today's talk Dr. Saloni is going to talk mainly about what are the key considerations for doing good printing for microarray slides, especially the bioprinting versus microarraying. I hope you will enjoy this lecture. Uh, good afternoon, welcoming all the new people coming in. I uh, will take some time for you to settle down. Uh, today I am going to talk about ArrayJet solutions. Um, you probably all have worked or done some work with microarraying, designing an array experiment, printing arrays. Can anybody tell me how many maximum features have you been able to print on a slide? Anybody who has worked on arrays? Okay, so they are used to the Hupro uh, 20,000 features. That is good to know because um, we spent about, it was myself working with the team at CDI who spent two, three years developing the Hupro array and finally I am so pleased to see that it is in India and it was developed with our technologies. We do know that there are issues in our technologies today and we are lacking in some of the critical highly sensitive methodologies where thousands of interactions can be processed in one simultaneous manner. But it has to be cost effective, it has to use less of your precious sample because that is the most important thing. You are trying to conserve, save samples and get as many accurate runs out of it as possible. And that is why we have got inkjet bioprinting. We are from Scotland, Edinburgh, uh, that is where I live but I was, I was born in Mumbai. So, um, I still love this Scotland uh, in terms of the collaborations we have done with uh, institutes in India um, and a key goal for me to try and see what requirements proteomics in IIT has or any other academic institutions to try and fill that gap. So, it is a complete bioprinting solution which means that there are R&D systems that you can have in your lab and then there are once you have developed that assay, once you have a larger library to screen, then there are same technology can be scalable. So, it goes to a higher level of a system. So, not necessary that you have to start with a high throughput platform. You can start with the same technology with an R&D scale and then go upwards. One of the key things that we are doing is the ArrayJet advanced services. These are collaborative approaches with yourself as your scientist and our company scientists to develop the assay on the platform. So, we have done a lot of ELISA text transfers. So, right as you probably have all done ELISAs and HUPROs, you know that ELISA is quite time consuming, it requires a lot of sample, you can hardly do few ELISAs before you get few errors etc. So, what we do is we are doing assay transfer projects from ELISA to inkjet. 
And then we obviously provide consultation and other gaskets, consumables, printed slides. So we sell the Hue Pro slides because we developed it. Simple. Um, why a Rayjet? It's a complete solutions provider. Um, it's the fastest printing technology in the world. So if you are to compare this with any other method of screening or printing or arraying, it wouldn't give you the kind of efficiency that you would get in just 20 minutes of finishing your assay and spending the rest of the day actually doing analysis part, which is crucial for your, for your project, rather than sitting three days and just pipetting things. Uh, like I said, we have global presence, but especially in India, we've got Lab India Instruments. I'm not sure if how many, I think you've, some, some of you might know the company. It's a large distributor in India, and they are helping us with a lot of academics, institutions to try and get projects together to make sure the students are able to get the samples and analyze and print them in a particular facility. Uh, these are some of the key institutions and um, companies that we've worked with. As you can see, there is a nice spread of uh, academic institutions like the Sanger Institute, United States Medical Research Institute, Roslyn Institute where the Dolly was developed, um, Griffith University, Monash University, so reproductive health science. So these are, we, we do work with a lot of academics because there are so many different assays and projects that different applications, but instead of investing in five, six different platforms, the key idea is to have one platform, every department, chemical engineering, proteomics, genomics, glycans, they all can come and use it. And it is using a piezoelectric technology. So the printing is as quick as this, to be very honest with you. It's uh, 0.2 meters per second. Uh, this is something that I like to circulate across you guys. Um, this is a liquid sample handler. And it is able to handle biological samples uh, in terms of 12, multiples of 12 or multiples of 36. So depending on how many samples you have in a 384 well source plate, it aspirates the sample upwards and it attaches itself to the print head this way. So it makes a nice little attachment and what happens is afterwards, you don't need these pins at all. This is the biggest difference. Most of the technologies use pins. So they take your sample and they pin it. They take the sample and they pin it. Whereas for us, we don't need these pins because they're brittle, they break, they get clogged, and there is a lot of replacing, maintenance, all that is involved. So what we've done is we've bypassed that. So half of the printing, or the 100% of the printing happens with this print head. So imagine it's like an HP color printer in your house. Now imagine the color printer is printing all your biological samples on the fly without touching the slides or contaminating with the slides. So you are reducing the error rate, you're reducing the samples that actually go and get picked up and get deposited because everything is happening with the printhead. I'll just show this across to you. Try not to, um, try not to touch the pins because they're a little sensitive to breaking. So you can see that um, the Jet Spider is something that is in-house patented and developed. It can simultaneously aspirate a set of 12 samples together and print them simultaneously. So you imagine it's not just one, one, two, two. It goes 12, 12 in 20, I think it's 20 meters per second. Then goes back, picks up another 12, goes back, prints it again 20 meters per second. So the way we calculate the, the fastness of the efficiency of it is 640 features per second. So it's quick. 640 features per second is super quick. So sometimes you don't even know whether your sample is printed or it's, it's ongoing because it's that quick when it moves. So this is just to show you, this is your 384 well plate. This is your jet spider attached to the print head and it, it just dips itself and it picks up as little as 1.3 microliters enough to print 75 slides. Yes. So imagine people struggling with 30 microliter sample, 20 microliters for the whole year. We only need 1.3 microliters as a minimum to be able to screen an array of 75 slides, which is enough to give you more than enough results. So how much sample are you saving? So let's think about it that way. Again, this is the printhead. This is the jet spider. And this is 
the source plate. What happens is the sample gets aspirated upwards, goes inside the printhead and it just prints. That's the printing. So this is the connection between the printhead and the jet spider and it prints. This is a bit too technical. It shows you how much volume of a sample you can get in your capillaries of the printhead. Because it's an industrial printhead, it's extremely robust and anti-corrosive. So you can even get to the level of understanding how much volume you of sample you need for the whole year to be able to print, let's say, 100 slides or process 96 ELISAs in less than a week. So you can cal we can help you calculate this. Again, I'll move through the video because I'll be able to show you offline. This is taken from one of the studies we did, very similar customer to Hupro CDI, very similar customer, but we helped him to do 65,000 features in one slide. So this was high throughput printing style, but you see the morphology and you see the assay results that you get is highly reproducible. So your one slide will be able to do the same job as your slide number 1000. And this is what people have, obviously this is coming from Appendorf and we all know Appendorf. Um, this is the results they got with their contact spin spotter where it took them maybe a week to do this or maybe two weeks to do this. This is the work we did with Arayjet, not only for Hupro, not only for this customer, but for many of them when we do this work, it is highly precise spots. So you don't see any merging, you don't see any dirt or missing data or anything of that sort. Again, sensitive, versatile, reproducible, multiplex because we support a lot of ELISA tech transfers. This technology is highly efficient to transfer any immunoassay into inkjet because any immunoassay that you're doing has certain limitations that all get transferred into positives so that most of your research is focused on getting the actual analysis, the actual data. High throughput screening. This is something that we support in terms of whether it's antibody discovery, host pathogen interaction, biomarker discovery, epitope mapping, hybridoma screening. There's a lot of uh, discussion on NAPA arrays, hybridomas. So we do that. We've helped a lot of people today that you can see in this symposium as well to develop projects around hybridoma screening where you have your lysates. They get printed off on one layer. So different lysates get printed off on different slides. Then you have your target antibody of interest that gets printed on top of each other. So you can imagine there is a spot and then there is another spot on top. And because of that binding of one spot to another spot, it's called a spot on spot assay. So it's a spot on spot type of printing where you can make sure the entire interaction or the screening is done while it's getting printed. Antibody validation, which we've all done. Small molecule library screening, again, this is for drug targeting, therapeutic antibody screening, and gene expression profiling. Now you are going to think what samples can Arrayjet handle. All samples can be printed. So we go from nucleic acids, so genomic slab can be used. Um, you've got cell lysates, you've got serum or plasma that can be spotted, small molecules, aptamers, hybridoma supernatants, carbohydrates, nanoparticles and polymers also. Uh, and of course, we do cell tissue microring as well. So the more things you can imagine outside the box, what can this platform support? The more answers you will get, yes, we can do it. So it's quite flexible in terms of what your project is and what samples you have. And then how, how can we transfer those samples onto inkjet style of printing? Obviously, again, I'm saying this is not restricted to slides. So again, I'll let you pass this on. I can pass this on myself, but um, yeah. So this is, this is the plates and the slides that we can do. So imagine doing one entire ELISA in one well and doing 96 ELISAs in one plate at one time and doing 100 such plates. So 96, my maths is very bad. That's why I'm a biologic person, but 
if you count this, if you calculate this yourself, you will be able to understand how many ELISAs you can do and how much time you can save to actually analyze the data points to get your data right because it's going to be highly accurate. So I'll show you this is the plate that I'm circulating across. In this plate, there is one well. Your entire one ELISA can happen in one well. Instead of one 96 well ELISA plate for one reaction, that one plate, that one plate can all get concised into just one small tiny well. So you can see that we can not only print onto wells, but onto plates, onto biochips. Majority of the work I'll tell you is on slides to be very honest. Um, but I don't know how many of you have uh, had any experience with SPR imaging, SPRI technology, but this is something that again is used for drug targeting. Uh, and we are able to print onto the SPR prisms as well. So there are companies that require SPRI as one of the key methods to get your drug target, but we can, we can reduce the process by helping them with the SPR prism printing. It's very simple, it's speed, it's precision, and it's consistency. There is a reason why yesterday you all could do work on Upro arrays, because there is a reason every array is accurate, because it's printed with an inkjet technology. So bioprinting versus microarraying. There are very key differences why people say, oh, microarraying is outdated. It's, it's now everyone's moved to gen next generation techniques. Whereas here you're, we are giving you a complete understanding on traditional microarraying and what bioprinting with Araja do. We have an inline optical quality control camera where we do the QC for you. You don't have to have a separate QC step. We'll do the QC for you, and if we see that your Im important antibody is missing, the coolest thing about the software is it remembers which slide your antibody is missing. It'll go back and print it. So at the end of the run, you've not wasted your antibody. You're able to get a full set of data from that one printing because it remembered that it is, if it is missed somewhere, because maybe you missed uh, putting the sample or it was a bit sticky and it couldn't get aspirated. In many of these techniques, the software, which is called the iris, the iris as the eye, can remember, recognize which, okay, slide number 1000 has my antibody 5 missing. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to have 1000 slides with all the antibodies missing. It's a waste of my experiment. So what it does, it is remembers that one antibody 12 is missing. It will go back and print antibody 12 to all the 1,000 slides in case you've forgotten to put the antibody or it has missed. So it will make sure that all the data you get is a complete set of data and not just missing contents, which sometimes we do see with other arraying technologies that you see missing, missing content. So here we are again bypassing that missing content. Again, go, I mean, this is, this is a very easy table, I would say. Using the pins, not using the pins. Slow printing, sample concentration is very critical. Here we have, we can print on four degrees. So we actually convert, the whole machine goes inside a big fridge. So the fridge is like this tall. Uh, probably, yeah, it's probably this tall and it is this wide. So what happens is the machine goes inside a printer. And this is how the Hupro arrays are actually made in Baltimore. So when I went there for the setup, uh, the whole lab is converted into a four degree fridge. So what happens is the entire arrays that are spotted on the slide, they are extremely sensitive and functional. So they can be used and sold and a lot of people can make sure that the technique is quite standard. Again, higher setup and maintenance. Um, that is again something which is bypassed because we don't require any extra fancy readers or fancy equipment or hidden consumables. It's very simple. The whole system works on liquid hydraulics. All you need to do is prepare a glycerol buffer in your lab, which you get a recipe, you prepare a glycerol buffer. That buffer goes into the system and that's really it. That's all you need to make this work. Trust me, that's all you need. So people say, oh, you need this scanner to go with it. You need a reader to go. We don't need that. It is compatible with lots of scanners, which today you have in many labs. So it reduces a lot of hidden work that goes into making an assay. So for me, it is 
what do I need to make the system work? I need a glycerol buffer, which I can prepare in my lab in five liters, four liters. That goes inside the system and that makes the system run. And then slides, which we all can buy from a lot of suppliers here. So what really you need is just the running time. <coughs> Again, this is something that people have asked me in the past is, so are you the only ones or are there other people? So I thought I'll show it to you to see, to make you see the difference in what is the edging effect here. They're all non-contact, so nobody uses pins. We're all using this print head mechanism. But there are, there are large differences in how we can handle each and every sample. I'm going to go back. So you can see that the number of plates we can do, the number of samples that can get handled are quite high. And the deposition rate is the fastest, which is why we are the fastest in the world. So if there are assays that need to be done in a timeline and you have to report results in a week and you're not getting success with pipetted ELISAs, what are you going to do? You're going to quickly run to an array printer, print your samples, as many slides as you want and process those assays. instruments so this is again like i was saying it's not just it's not just for companies it's not just for um, research or high throughput scientists it is for r and d work as well i would say 50% of the people i've worked with personally to develop assays including the hupro guys they're they're all institutions we worked with Johns Hopkins, we worked with Sanger, we worked with Monash University, we worked with Griffith. So there are lots of institutes that require these platforms, more than the companies, I would say. So this is our entry level system, which is called the Marathon Argus. It does not have that camera features that will remember and reprint. This, all these are the systems that are there, have the camera feature which will remember and recognize and reprint the spot. This is how the machine looks. It's, um, it's got glass panels, so it's quite easy to see what you're doing. You can actually see the spots getting printed. Um, this is the space here. Th these are the two bottles I'm showing you where you can prepare your own glycerol buffer. And you can, and that's all is needed. So you have your glycerol buffer in the system. You put your slides. You have your 384 sample plate here. You have your slides printing here. And that's it. So. It's quite easy. It's really quite easy. I started doing this technology when I was, I think this is ages ago, but to be very honest, I was 22 when I started this. And it was easy for me to grasp it. It was easy for me to understand what the platform, it's not really high, high level, high tech, it's not that bad. So for students who are using these platforms, it needs to be quite easy for you guys to do things. It shouldn't be that advanced. It has to be easy, it has to be user friendly, and it has to be fast. This is something that um, we've developed. It's an in-house servicing where we work in partnership with you. You tell us about your projects. We assign a scientist who can understand what kind of projects you're working on, whether it's an ELISA-based <coughs> method, it's an immunoassay, whether it's something else, whether you're developing a chemical product, whether you have some chemical samples, anything. You'd speak to us, we will develop a protocol for you with our experience and the knowledge that we have shared with lots of industries to have a very easy cost-effective method to transfer this into inkjet. So we will print the samples for you. It takes a week because it's very quick. So it comes, let's say on Monday, we'll do the printing on Tuesday. We'll give you the report analysis. So it'll take a week by the time it gets shipped, which is shorter time than many people here locally in India can also give you back as custom printed arrays. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I have been told that the sort of time lead to get the arrays back after printing is about two to three weeks, depending on how busy they are or you know, depending on how many projects they have. So because it's fast, we are able to do a lot of printing for a lot of students quickly. So in a, in a day, we can finish off a lot of projects. So you don't have to wait for your results or your reports. So manufacturing services, Custom array printing, again, custom panels are available, custom antibody panels are available that we, we can pick and choose for you. Uh, you must have, from yesterday's Hupro, you have, you know the Hupro content. It's got custom arrays, you've got custom panels. So what we can do is we can pick and choose different antibody panels that you want for your assay 
and we can print them however in whichever fashion you like. That is with Arijit Advance. So different ways that we collaborate with students and researchers especially is we have a basic proof of concept like a pilot study where you understand what are the requirements of an assay transfer and then you outsource them. The other few options are these. So there are institutions where funding is extremely critical and this is why these are the approaches we can take. So we've supported Indian Institute, so IISE Bangalore for the UK IER and Gita projects for their grant for the system where they feel that all the departments can make use of this. We've supported um, working with Biocon in India, uh, in Bangalore, sorry, to get their immunoassays developed on the platform. Uh, there are few other institutes in Pune as well as in Bangalore where the grant funding has been done. So we are providing complete grant support. So if you do need or you have something which you feel will require the system or will require the services and then there is a scope for a grant, then we can give you all the grant support for justifying why the technology is required. Very simple workflow. So you'll have an initial discussion with somebody like myself in India and you'll go to our head scientist or the team of scientists in UK. Um, we'll have a collaborative discussion on what you want to develop actually, what is your assay? What is your criteria? What do you want to achieve out of it? And then we will develop a printing protocol, a printing support mechanism which at the end of the day will give you guarantee that yes, I can come to them six months down the line for a next project and they'll be able to do the similar job for me. So I think this is something that um, is a crux of the Areja technology. It's a software that is able to make you design the entire array. So this is your command center. This works in conjunction with the with the technology. So when you're trying to print samples, first you need to design your arrays, you need to design your assays. And this is done with the help of a command center software. So let me just take a second here and show you a video. So this is how the technology really works, how the printing is done. You can see this is the platform. You've got a tray of 25 slides and that's how it moves. Each time it moves, it prints 12 samples on one slide, second slide, third slide, fourth slide, till 25 slides in an on-the-fly motion. This is how it's picking up its sample. This is getting into the source plate where your biological sample is. It aspirates. Once the aspiration is done, it transfers the sample into your industry print head, which is like your color print head. So now there is no need of these pins. There is no need to use these pins. Now it's all in the part of the print head. So your sample is here. And then wait for a minute, this comes forward and off it goes. And each time it is doing 12 samples at a time across 25 slides. That's your first ray done. Moves again. 12 samples at a time, second tray done. Moves again, 12 samples, third tray done. It's going to be less than two minutes for me to finish my 12 samples across 100 slides. So this is the quick motion. This is how quickly it moves as a printer. Once it's finished doing it, it obviously has a standby mode where it is able to wash itself. So many people must be concerned, how do you do the contamination? Is it contaminated? If you're picking up another sample, does it? No, it has its own individual wash cycles. So it does washing automated. So the whole thing is automated. So it not only does the washing after every time it picks up a new set of 12, it washes internally. And once the washing is complete, it makes sure that the samples are getting back and your new set of samples is going back in. Let me show you another video. This is how we have used a variety of different platforms or surfaces. 
This is the one that times you. So this video will give you a little bit of a timing. This is in fast motion, but within a minute, you can have your entire panel of antibodies quickly printed. And you see how this is moving. This is how the aspiration takes place. Your sample goes inside the print head. Then this is where it ejects out. This is your software that I'm going to tell you about. These are your plates where you can design what plate you want. This is the washing step. This is a test slide. This will show you how many slides or how many spots are actually there. Look at how tiny the spots are. Look how many spots we can fit on a slide. Again, temperature, like I told you, we can print from 4 degrees to 35 degrees. And humidity is again really high from 80%. We work with customers with 80% humidity or 40% humidity. This is the washing cycle. This is where the washing happens. And once the washing happens, which is the bit which takes some time, um, because it's very critical to wash your one set of 12 samples to avoid any contamination, we want to make sure these are some of the spots we've printed with label-free technique. And I think, I believe they are not printed on a slide. They're printed on a completely different surface. So you have a slide, you have a multiplex slide. You can even do go as big as a plate. So each ELISA can happen on a plate. You've got chips. If you're anybody is doing microfluidics work or any of the lateral flow techniques, they can all be transferred. <laughs> So as I mentioned in the beginning, the success of microarray based experiment also lies in how reproducible our printing technologies are, how good our arrays have been made and there is no variability or very little variability from one batch of printing to the other, other batch of printing. Imagine when you are preparing the slides for doing microarray experiments, you are printing in hundreds of slides, you know a large number of slides at the same time and if there is a lot of variation to start with from slide number 1 to slide number 100, then your entire biological experiments and reproducibility will be compromised. So, it is very important to pay good attention to the quality control checks which are required to make good arrays and of course, you know as you proceed to perform the experiments, there has to be various QC checks to ensure that the quality is good for your printing and what slides you are going to use. I hope in this lecture, you have learnt about inkjet printing and its benefits. We also taught about different kind of substrates which are used for this printing and advantage of this technology over other technologies. In the next lecture, Dr. Saloni will continue and talk to you about how exactly this technology works and how it can be used for many microarray based applications. Thank you.